My name is Paul Hirsch. I was born and raised in New York City. I was always fascinated by the movies. King Solomon's Mines was a very important film in my childhood. When I was a kid, I would see pictures over and over and over. I remember seeing An American in Paris with Gene Kelly about a hundred times, which I guess was a hint that I was about to become an editor. Meanwhile, a friend of mine was editing a little documentary and had set up an editing room in his apartment on the Upper West Side. And I visited him and I saw for the first time a splicer, a synchronizer, rewinds, and a moviola. So here I was and I see this machine that's running film and projecting it on this little screen and you could stop on a frame, which was astounding to me. And you could look at each frame as a separate photograph. And then you could back up. That was really a magical thing to do. I had always liked working with my hands, and I suddenly conceived the notion of maybe this was something I would like to be doing. Found a job at a small industrial film company called Dynamic Films. Shortly thereafter, I heard about an editor who was looking for an assistant, a guy named Chuck Workman. And Chuck hired me as his assistant. After a few months there, Chuck was getting more work than he could handle, so he handed some off to me. The first thing I ever cut was a three and a half minute version of a 10 minute featurette for the Thomas Crown Affair. My brother had a job at Universal as a junior executive scouting, directing, and writing talent in New York. And I think in reality, they used him as a lightning rod to deflect attention from people they didn't want to talk to. So anybody came in with a project in New York, they would give them to my brother Chuck, Chuck Hirsch. He would propose supporting some of these projects and they shot him down every time. So finally he was, he was sort of frustrated and he had a two week vacation and one of the directors who had come to him with a project was a young man named Brian De Palma. They did this film and they needed a trailer for it. By that time, I had started cutting trailers for Floyd Peterson. And Chuck came to me and asked if I would cut the trailer. So I did. Brian liked it and I met Brian and he and I sort of hit it off. And when the picture came out, it was sort of a small success and they got the money to do a sequel. Armed with my understanding of how to do trailers, I thought, well, I can do a longer film too. And I left Floyd Peterson to go edit Son of Greetings, which title was changed to Hi Mom. And that was the picture that focused on De Niro. He was the star of Hi Mom and that was his first starring role. The problems that I encountered every day in my work, I was sort of reinventing the art of editing. Not that I invented anything that hadn't been done already, but by inventing it for myself, it was very exciting. That was my first editing job. I was 23 years old. I didn't know anything, but I didn't know that I didn't know anything. So I thought, yeah, I can do that. And I think that was an enormous, my ignorance was an enormous asset because uh, it gave me the freedom to just jump in without fear. The first picture I did on a computer was Mission Impossible. When I started working on the computers, I was editing the image inside the frame as opposed to just editing the frame itself. Sort of amazing control that it gives you and the kind of freedom to do things that you shy away from on film because it was just too difficult. When I was cutting on film, I was able to do about 10 minutes a week. With the Avid, I was able to go three minutes a day, 15 minutes a week, fairly easily. And on some pictures, I've been able to average four cut minutes a day, cutting about 20 minutes a week. The Avid has really increased my productivity in terms of what I can turn out. The real satisfaction for me is the doing of it. Work is play. I tell people I sat down to work and 40 years went by.